Hey guys, Dante's here, and welcome back to the Burgos Art Reviews. And Samurai Jack is back. I'm not just talking about how after last week's April Fool's we missed him, I mean he is back. In this episode, Samurai Jack feels like the original Samurai Jack we love, the one that cares for all living things, even though most of those living things want to kill him. So, first things first, Tara Strong. That's the voice actress for Ashi. I said Tashi last time, sorry about that. Ashi, Tara Strong, and yes, same voice actress of the princess from uh, Symbiotic Titan. Not Princess Azula though, that's a different actress. So I was almost right. And who else but Tara Strong to do such a fun, this character. Come on, Tara Strong, you're talking Fairly Odd Parents, you're talking uh, Foster's Home Foster for Imaginary Friends, Teen Titans, she's everywhere. My Little Pony, she's everywhere. Anyway, the episode itself is episode 4 of Samurai Jack. And as mentioned before, this I've repeated myself a lot with the last three episodes. We know that they already hit the nose when it comes to music. They know what they're doing when it comes to action. They know what they're doing when it comes to pacing and silence. Uh, and and, and uh, the limited dialogue that makes the entire show. But the one thing we've been missing from this new season that the original season had was the ever-changing landscape. Samurai Jack himself is a MacGuffin. Not the sword he carries, but his character. We follow him and see the world through his eyes. He is our little anchor to the world. In one episode, he'll be fighting pirates. In another episode, he'll be in a city of robots. In another episode, he'll be surrounded by... Buddhist monks, each episode gave us a different environment, and so far, with this season, we've had a continuous story, and therefore, we've kind of lost that change of environment. Not to mention, of course, that the story so far has been very serious and very mature and dark, with the occasional laughter from Aku going through his depression. In this episode, we return to the basics of new episode, brand new environment. The episode begins where Jack awakens. We see how he survives the fall by the skin of his teeth, hitting branches on the way down and hitting snow. He finds one of the dead uh, daughters of Aku. And it's kind of darker than you would even imagine because she, he doesn't find her dead where she lands. There's a trail of blood that indicates that she crawled her way after he knocked her off the mountaintop. Where she, he crawled her way and then died. Or did she? Tashi's back everyone. Tashi's back and she is pissed. And she is funny in her rants. We go from this really serious beginning where he's still hurt by the idea of killing another human. Like it just digs down into his soul but then he, ye he yells out to the sky that they chose their path, which was something that was pointed out in episode 3. These people choose their path and Jack gave him a chance. They chose it and he must accept it. But he doesn't want to. That's Samurai Jack. That's the Jack we love. He, kn he knows he needs to accept it, but he doesn't want to. He wants to be the hero again. And in this episode, damn it, he's the hero. Basically... He wakes up, Tashi wakes up, Tashi attacks him, and through a nice little action sequence, he ties her up from a tree with her own uh, chain and hook. And you get this really comical scene of just her ranting as she swings back and forth. She swings into frame and she calls him a bunch of bad words, and then swings back out. Then swings back into frame again and tries to kick him with her feet and he, she swings back out. And it happens a few times. You instantly get to feel that they start the episode really dark and then flip it to comedy. Once again, a kind of trope of Samurai Jack, having that weird back and forth. And the episode continues from there with them being swallowed by a giant colossal creature. And it's really reminiscent of a previous episode in the series where Jack will willingly crawls into the stomach of a dragon in order to save a small town that the dragons basically... Farting on. 
But in this episode, this creature is so massive. I'm talking like the spice must flow massive. That the entire episode is just them going from scene to scene in this creature. Seeing its digestive system, its multicolor insides, its electrical nervous system. Not to mention all the little bacteria by little. I mean huge giant crab like creatures that wander around. It's, it's its own world inside the creature. And you feel, once again, like you're watching Samurai Jack because he might as well just be in another planet. Which is a kind of running theme of the original uh, series, the original four seasons. Every episode was different. Where well, he could be on a whole other planet, but he was still on Earth. And you get this, you finally get this kind of buddy cop dynamic. where um, Or semi-buddy cop. Jack is carrying Tashi on his back almost the entire Tashi. See what I did? Carrying Ashi on his back almost the entire episode. And it's just humor the entire way through. Because she wants to kill him. The entire time she is ranting and raving and she's trying to kill him. And he's trying to keep her alive. You see him slowly falling back into the person he once was. However, he's still mentally off. He... What was that? I don't know if you guys heard that. That was a loud slam from upstairs. Those are my neighbors. Anyway, he still is seeing things and hearing voices that contradict him. And one voice tells him, a really gentle voice, this kind of spiritual little puffball, tells him, you should leave her. She chose her path. But then Jack realizes she chose her path because she'd been misinformed. When Jack first fought these individuals, he, th he thought they were robots. When he realized they were human, he gave them a chance. They chose to continue trying to kill him, and he had to make a stand. But now, with the final survivor, the only person that he's even talking to, he realizes these people, these young girls don't know what they're doing. I mean, they know what they're doing when it comes to killing people, but they don't know the truth, and the truth is that Jack is the good guy. Aku is the one slowly squeezing the life out of Earth and all of the neighboring planets because Aku controls the universe. They think it's the opposite way. Ashi believes Aku created the universe and that Jack is a parasite. She even uses that term, parasite. So the entire episode is just comical scenes of them, of him carrying on his back. She's thrashing around as he's fighting giant crabs as at pools of acid flow in, as it begins to rain needles, needles, they are inside of a creature that's trying to eat them, so everything in there is trying to kill them, like everything. And it's great. It's actually an uplifting episode. After something so heavy as a previous episode, we have an uplifting episode. The writers know that at some point you had to stop and do something good. I mean, even Attack on a Titan has to sometimes let a character not get eaten. And Samurai Jack has to let a character breathe. Another thing I want to point out, speaking of the puffball, once again Jack sees a version of himself. Now a lot of people on the internet have been saying that this is Jack from the past because he's dressed in the white gi with the sword and everything. A lot of people assume that he's arguing with his past, his past self. But in this episode it's much clearer it's not that. This past self he's talking to is not him. It looks like his past self, but it's someone that is the opposite. In the first episode, the past self tried to convince him to kill himself. In the second episode, was the third one? When he's in the cave. When he's in the cave, the distorted version of his past self tries to tell him, well, you know... You might as well let them kill you unless you're going to kill them. Like he's egging him on to lead only a path of death. To take the path of death. To kill or be killed. In this one, this past self is saying you should leave her behind. She's useless to us. She's lost. But the Jack we see now, be it Jack, with all of his crazy visions, with his choice to kill humans, sits down and says no. I'm not talking to you anymore. And he goes and saves her. In fact, he actually says that, runs off, 
beats the hell out of this giant crab creature. You know, crab people. And carries it away on his, on his back again. The entire episode is just on his back. It is a great episode. Visually beautiful scenery, like I mentioned earlier. All the little creatures are neon. It has a feel of deep sea life. This translucent yet uh, luminescent world with dark, dark backgrounds, with foregrounds of pinks and purples and, and violets and everything's moving. It's beautifully done. Painterly scenery. Yes, I know it's all done digital, but they made a point to make it look as painterly as possible and it works. And the whole thing uh, builds up to a climax as they escape the creature together. By together meaning she's still on his back. She's not helping him. She is not helping him. And they escape and they land in the ocean. This creature went from the forest to the ocean. It's massive. It's like a giant sandworm that just goes everywhere. And they get to this little island. And it's literally just a little island with like, you could walk from one side to the other. Um, he drags uh, Achi onto it. She's passed out. And he sits down. And Achi wakes up. And it's this great scene where she wakes up and she's in the grass. And she's laying low in the grass. And she smiles because she's behind him. And he has no idea that she's awake. It's this great devious smile. It's like a, like a, like a lioness ready to hunt its prey. And she finds the end of her chain, the uh, sickle. And she gets closer and closer and crawls to him. And then a ladybug flies by. Now remember, Ashi was the only one to ever even see something from the outside world when they were little. Which is why she's the most determined. Because she's seen what she believes Aku has given them. She, she knows like this is our treasure. We must protect it. And the ladybug flies. And you get a beautiful flashback when Ashi was a little, little girl. Fighting her sisters in training. And she stops her sister because she sees the ladybug fly by. And once again, she believes it's a gift from Aku. And her mother calls to her. And she, the mother catches the ladybug and tells Ashi, these small little, these small distractions, you know, it'll be the end of you pretty much. These small distractions will destroy you. These small distractions are not of Aku's making. Pretty much she says, these small little things um, have nothing to do with Aku. And then she crushes the ladybug. And Ashi, present day, sees the ladybug fly away, away from her. And Jack, still with his back to her, he has no idea she's awake, puts his hand out and the ladybug lands on his hand. And she watches. And you can tell what she feels just by the way it's drawn, the storyboarding, beautiful. You can tell she's watching because she expects him to crush the ladybug. Because Jack destroys anything in Aku's creation. If it belongs to Aku, he'll destroy it. That's what she thinks. And she watches in shock as the ladybug crawls down his hand and flies away. And then she hears her mother's voice again pretty much say that these small distractions are not of Aku. Or in other words, if Aku created the world, how did these little things get here? And why doesn't the samurai just destroy them if they do belong to Aku? It's, you can tell it's all these questions that roll in her head. And she drops the sai, or the sickle, the little blade, and just sits there. And the episode ends. Not with her saying she believes him. Not with a sudden turn where they must work together to escape the giant worm. Because she was willing to die. To get, uh, to get uh, Jack to die in the freaking worm together. That bitch crazy. Uh, and, he, and he calls her crazy. He doesn't call her a bitch, but he calls her crazy. And I love it. Just hearing Jack go, What were you crazy? It's, it's a great line. It's, just, he, it's a great line. But anyway, she sits there and the episode ends. You have the beginning of something. Of what? You don't know. Yes, everyone's dying to see Ashi turn good. But you don't just turn good overnight after a lifetime of being what she is. Even in Samurai Jack. Things to point out. Let's see. Things to point out. Well, I'm giving this all high praise. You really could tell that. The storyline, you know, you don't know where it's going to go from here now. In fact, uh, 
the preview for next episode completely shifts gears back to Aku, where you see there are still people fighting Aku. There are still armies trying to fight Aku and losing horribly. And with that said, episode 5, if the sneak peek is to be believed, might have the Scotsman. Real quick, you get a scene of a guy with long, white, flowing hair. Old man with a machine gun leg fighting Aku. So, the show, it seems, is going to take a little drift away to show you what's happening around the world away from Jack. Because even if Jack's fallen from grace, there are still people out there willing to fight Aku. Once again, answering our questions because if there's anyone people have been asking about, it's about the Scotsman. But, we'll have to wait until next week to see that episode. Uh, that's pretty much the gist of it, guys. It's a great episode. It's a great brief. A, a, a breather, a great cool down from all the more violence and seriousness of the last three episodes. And it's great to see Jack, though still a little kooky in the head, slowly regaining who he once was. He's gone down and he's coming back up, and he might have an ally, or she might just decide to leave him because she needs to find her own way in life. You never know. Stay tuned, guys, because I'm going to be doing an episode within the next week about Samurai Jack. About the times, well, let's just say Samurai Jack's already lost. That's right. We're going to take a look at past episodes about the times Jack has already lost his fight. And I'll see you then when that comes up. Anyway, guys, once again, I am Dante. Like, favorite, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Later.